All right. Hey, guys, we are live. It's Jewel Tolentino here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this interview. Today, I've got Michael Essick, and I've been, you know, reading his blog posts and uh, watching him for a while. He is completely crushing it, not just on Merch by Amazon, but on print-on-demand sites in general. If you've seen his uh, blog posts where he does the pie charts, where he, he does his income, it's crazy. So, Michael, I want you to introduce yourself and, yeah, just tell us a little bit about your story and how you got started with uh, Print On Demand. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, no problem. Yeah, my journey is, uh, my background is kind of graphic design and web design. I used to be a, a web designer and I was always the, uh, the kid who couldn't stop doodling in class. So I've just been kind of drawing and doodling my whole life, it feels like. And uh, about three or four years ago, I um, I wanted to develop a side income and I found um, the world of print on demand. I found websites uh, websites like Redbubble and uh, T Fury and uh, Shirt A Day websites where illustrators and designers could create original work and get paid to post it on the internet and people would buy it and, uh, and to make a royalty from that. So I uh, kind of threw myself into that and it, it was small beginnings. You know, I made like maybe $50, I think, in my first month. Um, just posting on sites like Redbubble. And uh, I think I got I got a shirt design on one of the fairly big shirt a day sites. I think it was Shirt Punch printed one of my designs. So I made like a $100 or something from that. And uh, since since that, I've just kind of kept at it. So I just kept adding designs. and uh, so. What, what's when was it last year around uh october when merch by amazon launched so uh i'm sure your listeners are fairly familiar with merch but that's when <laughs> things really started to take off for me um so obviously I, i'd been making designs for a couple of years so i had a load of designs ready to go so when merch became available i just had like a few hundred designs just put them all on merch and uh saw my income basically double and then uh, triple and just kind of kept on rising since then. So uh, I've just been feeding the beast since uh, since that, and uh, things are continuing to do well. And then I started a blog last year to just kind of uh, track my progress and share what I'm doing with other people who might be interested, and really to help people like me who would be designers and illustrators who knew they had a skill and had ability but didn't know how to make some money from it. And uh, I knew that that was a frustration that I had for many years. Um, you know, I tried to do freelance and things like that and never really managed to make it work. And it felt like when I found print on demand, um, you know, this was the kind of business model and something that could really work for me. So, um, you know, I feel the pain of designers and artists who are creative and, uh, uh, you know, skilled and talented and uh, wanted to help them really, you know, see that this is possible and, and show them some of the steps and the tips and the tricks uh, to get there. So yeah, that's my story. And um, hopefully awesome. I'm, I'll be able to help some people today. Cool, cool. Okay, so uh, just before we go on, I uh, want to let you guys know, Arit is behind the scenes right now. And uh, she'll take any of your questions, she'll let me know, and then we can answer them live. So if you have the questions, put them in the chat. And then um, when you found uh, Merch by Amazon, because you had been doing other print print on demand sites, when you found Merch, yeah. what was your reaction? Were you really excited? Yeah, a great question. I was, um, I do remember, I think I remember how I found it was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I had um, had some Google alerts, I think, set up for things like print on demand, because I was kind of mm. just tracking the industry. I knew I kind of wanted to write a blog eventually. And uh, I think I saw like a news alert come through for Amazon launches print on demand or something like that. And um, I'd been thinking previously that, you know, what I really needed was just because I'd looked at Amazon, I'd looked at people who were selling on Amazon and I knew that I could do fulfillment. There were fulfillment companies that would allow you to sell wherever you wanted to and they would do the, the shipping and the printing and all that stuff. So I was looking at Amazon and I just thought, you know, Amazon is obviously a huge market, but I'd never dabbled in it. I'd never sold anything on it. And I thought, you know, what would be great is if Amazon just launched their own print on demand, their own Redbubble system. And, uh, you know, like a few months later, Amazon launched just that. And I was like, oh, OK, this is perfect. And like for a few days, I was like poking around. I was reading every bit of information, all the terms of service and the, you know, the privacy, all, all the, every little bit of the policy. And I was like, is there anything that makes this 
not work or you know is there some trick is there some kind mm -hmm. of what's the catch and there was no catch it was completely wide open uh you know anyone could sign up at that time it wasn't um behind a you know invite system or anything like that so it was just absolutely perfect for me it was you know it couldn't have been better and um the timing of it was perfect as well it launched in october just before you know the fourth quarter and christmas and all the kind of sales and stuff so i saw just an immediate um i think it was literally a doubling of my <clears throat> excuse me of my income uh, as soon as merch launched um so it was great and it was also um you know, there was kind of a bit of politics stuff going on. So there was trends that you could hop on very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was kind of the Wild West because Amazon hadn't really formed its policies and stuff. So so you could post designs, you know, based on movies and TV and stuff, which is the kind of stuff I'd been playing with, you know, around the edges of what's kind of okay and not okay. Um, mm -hmm. But back then you could do all that stuff. You could do kind of bad language if you wanted to or risky jokes and stuff. So... It, yeah, it was it was great, and it just kind of took off. I did a lot of trends. I did a lot of trend surfing, and uh, just kind of you know immersed myself in that for 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 days, and then uh, and obviously it just kind of grew from there. And um, last year I was able to quit my quit my job, my nine to five, and just focus full time on on t shirts. So yeah, wow. Merch by Amazon has just been uh, uh, you know couldn't couldn't have been better if I'd planned it myself. Congratulations on that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, the, the same kind of thing happened with uh, me as well. So I was doing Amazon FBA, uh, mainly in Canada, mm -hmm. and a little bit in the US. And then everyone who was doing Amazon FBA started talking about merch by Amazon. Yeah. And, you know, Amazon's such an innovative company that when they release something, it's usually pretty good. So I checked out Merch by Amazon and previously, like in the past, I, I had seen those um, Shopify or sorry, Teespring, like the Teespring where people mm -hmm. would do Facebook ads and mm -hmm. do that whole route. And then it, when you get a certain amount of shirts, then it prints. Like if you sell a certain amount, then they print them type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I was interested in that. But uh, to me, I wasn't really interested in um, doing Facebook ads or doing that type of marketing. So mm -hmm. yeah, same, I same. didn't really think, yeah, I didn't really think anything of it. And then so Merch by Amazon released and the same thing. I was like, okay, how does this work? There's no like monthly fee for membership. Um, yeah, yeah. It's basically free and you just come up with the designs and I, yeah, same thing. I was trying to figure out, okay, how is this not going to work? And it seemed like it was just going to work. Like if you, if you put in yeah. the time effort, that is just mm -hmm. going to work. Um, I, yeah, I have to admit in the beginning, I was a little bit discouraged because I didn't have a design background. Yeah. Um, so I, I know basic, basic Photoshop, like mainly doing like text and very simple pictures. Uh -huh. Um, so what, what would you say to those kinds of people? Cause not everyone is a designer and, uh, who can get questions from people who saying that they're not designers. Um, what kind of advice from a designer would you give to a non-designer? Yeah, good question. I think um, it kind of depends on, and you know, some people aren't designers, but they can commission designs and they know what looks good and what doesn't. Um, and then there's some people who just, um, you know, they can't tell the difference between a good design and a bad design. Um, so I think it depends kind of where you are on that spectrum. If you're, you know, because because obviously a lot of us have, you know, different skill sets and uh, there's certain computer programs I can't use, but I, I know what looks good and what looks bad, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would say if you're someone who really doesn't get, you know, can't tell the difference between a good design and a bad design, um, then it's worth, well, it's not worth, it's, it's necessary that you find a designer. And that designer will have to do more than just um, arranging text and images. They're going to need to kind of do the whole kind of concept, if that makes sense. So, so for me personally, I am a designer. I have a design background. So I can create designs myself. And obviously, I did do for the first three years. And this past year, I've just started outsourcing designs. So when I outsource designs to, to designers, um, I give them a very specific brief. I give them a layout. I give them a sketch. I often tell them what fonts and what colors to use. And obviously, if you're not a designer, then you're not going to be able to kind of go into that amount of detail or it's going to be hard for you to do so. 
So you're going to need to look for someone who can do the whole package, you know, the mm-hmm. whole thing, layout, colors, fonts, make decisions about all that stuff. Um, and I, I'd say that's hard, I think, from my experience. And um, I, I wouldn't want to put anyone off um, merch by Amazon or print on demand, but I think it, that it's a lot easier if you're a designer or someone with a design creative kind of head on your shoulders because mm-hmm. you're inherently um, – able to kind of come up with concepts and ideas and you know kind of okay it should look like this it shouldn't look like that and it should be these colors and you know the kind of fonts and all that kind of stuff you know you just, you know you just get it if you get it and if you don't it's kind of hard to then you know you've basically got to teach yourself design basically or kind of mm-hmm. immerse yourself in that i'm not saying it's impossible to learn but i think it's it's going to be a lot harder for those people if they don't have a, a kind of design background um, i agree it's so, totally yeah, think, doable. It's doable, yeah. but it's like um, if you don't have that eye, that yeah. and it's not like you need like a crazy skill or anything. Um, but there are some people who can't tell the difference between a good shirt and a bad shirt, yeah. um, as we've seen with some examples up there. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that with merch by Amazon as well, um, and especially, I mean, it's grown so fast and it has changed very fast in the short time that it's been up as a platform. Um, But you could get away with bad designs, poor designs, you know, text only designs. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I have text only designs and they sell. So, so anyone can do those kind of designs. I think though, that as the market is getting increasingly crowded, if you're, or I should say maybe the real money and the real kind of consistency is going to be made by people who can create designs that are high quality and that Mm -hmm. do stand out above the rest just like any other marketplace you know competition increases then you need to do one up on what everyone else is doing otherwise you're going to lose so yeah. um it has been possible to to you know make money with with poor designs and and uh, really simple designs um having said that simple designs are, are kind of a separate subject entirely because most of my designs are very simple that you know there's some simple text or some kind of parody or whatever mm-hmm. um so it, it doesn't have to be complicated it just has to be the right design for that uh, market and for that concept if that makes sense um, yeah so it's not yeah. always artistic and detailed and creative and and loads of colors and like original drawings or art or anything it doesn't have to be that but you do have to have the right um knowledge of the marketplace and what the design is supposed to communicate because that's what t-shirts are they're a visual communication medium um and they're one of the most versatile and most recognizable kind of things. So if your if your design doesn't get recognized like within seconds by the by the target market, if they don't kind of look at it and go, ah, you know, I get it, then that's when you know you've got a problem. That's what a t-shirt should do. It should just be like an immediate, you know, bam, like you get it in a few seconds. Um, so yeah, it doesn't need to be complicated, but it does need to be kind of effective at what it's doing. Cool. Well, also, you were mentioning that, you know, uh, if you're a designer, that you have an advantage. Um, I have a lot of questions from people who are designers. They're crazy artists, can make an awesome Mm. original design. But the thing that's holding them back is titles or keywords or text or anything like that. Like that part holds Mm -hmm. them back. Yeah. So what would you what would you say to that? Because you you are a graphic designer, you have that background. Did you have to learn that? Did you read a bunch of blog posts? What did you do? Yeah, great, great, great question. Um, so I I do have a background in art and design, and then I went into web design, and I went to work for a company that mm-hmm. did uh, search engine optimization. So I was there for like uh, seven years. So I basically picked up a lot of of knowledge about SEO and keywords and getting things ranking organically in Google. And so that's you had, kind of you had the whole package, basically. <laughs> I, yeah, well, I kind of learned over time, not not because I taught myself, but just because I was immersed in that environment, really. So I picked things up kind of via osmosis. And, and uh, I think there was a lot. That's kind of why I had some initial success just with Redbubble and, and TeePublic and other sites, because I knew about um, SEO so I could I could use the right kind of keywords and the right titles and I knew what to do. Um, but I, I I would say it's not everyone kind of thinks oh SEO and keywords they kind of think of it as some kind of black black magic or some you know yeah. secret secret science and it's really not especially with like merch and t-shirts it's really quite simple um, and it's really just the question is you know who's going to search for this design what 
terms are they going to search are they going to use to find it you know put your put yourself in the head of the customer and say okay i'm a customer um imagine a scenario say when you're the customer you're on the bus and you've sat opposite someone who's wearing this t-shirt this design that you're trying to sell um so you're the customer you've seen it you like it because you're the target market so you go home and you open your laptop and you go onto amazon and you're searching for that design what words are you going to use what phrases are you going to use to find it and if you do that exercise um nine times out of ten you'll come up with you know the exact kind of perfect solution now obviously that's only half the battle because the other half of the battle is is coming up with the right ideas and designs and concepts in the first place and that's what's much more important i would say um i think people kind of think of keywords and they tag them on at the end of the process so they create a design and then they think okay now i've created my design how do i sell it and really mm. you should you should think the other way around you should think first how do i sell this or what do i want to sell and then create it and then you you know the kind of process is a lot more organic in that in that situation so i think keywords it starts with the idea and it starts with the concept um and then you know there's kind of things you can do like you can throw in some keywords that people might use that you know just to kind of cover all bases or something like you know you might use a specific keyword and then you would go more general so you might go like basket of deplorables t-shirt trump supporting t-shirt or something like that Mm -hmm. you kind of cover related terms and stuff but again this is kind of stuff that's not you know it's not complicated and it's not secret everybody knows it everybody kind of gets it um i think this not not the secret but there's a lot to be said for kind of having a process that you work through with each design which is uh for example one of the things i do is just kind of before i create a design is just bash out a list of keywords that are related to it and uh you know anywhere between like 20 and 30 keywords it can be just kind of really try and get as many words out as possible and they could be really really tenuous links but if you just do go through that exercise you're just kind of making your brain work and try and think about everything in this design like okay what's actually in the design um i'm trying to think of an example to give you or something but you know it might be a joke it might be kind of a, a visual pun or something like that um and you might just kind of think about every related term, like if it's a fish joke or something, you'd, you'd just say ocean and sea and uh, marine biology. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just kind of think everything, you know, what's related, uh, sun, uh, beach, holidays, vacations, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff that might be, you know, I'm not saying these are the keywords you're going to use in your titles or anything. But what you're doing is you're kind of priming your, your brain and the pump and kind of starting to think about, okay, maybe someone who's a marine biologist might wear this t-shirt or maybe someone who loves dolphins might wear this t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And you're just kind of giving yourself space to think about it. And um, I think if you can do that, that's one tactic that can kind of help come up yeah. with keywords. Um, I agree. I agree. Because um, when we first uh, started, like I have a background in selling on eBay and um, Amazon FBA. So I at, in the very beginning I would always put myself in the mind of the buyer like if yeah. I wanted to get that item what am I typing in to find that and mm -hmm. I've primed my brain to think exactly how how you're like if yeah. the shirt like marine biologist or uh, someone who goes scuba diving or whatever like anything yeah, to do yeah. with water you just let your brain go but I just want to give an example to everyone we have another team member. There's three of us doing um, merch by Amazon and we have two accounts that we share. And mm -hmm. um, each person has a different role um, that we play in doing our merch by Amazon business. And the this one, the, our other business partner, her name is Maria. She had zero experience. And the reason why I want to share this story is so that, um, you know, there is hope for you. You can do the titles and keywords and it's not like you said, black magic or something yeah. secret. Like you can see what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. So she, she had zero experience and she didn't even know what SEO stand for. I don't think she knows at the moment <laughs> still, <laughs> but she's the one who does all of our titles and texts specifically for all of our shirts. That's just yeah. her job to do. And she mm -hmm. completely immersed herself and she, she's mastered it because now, you know, we're getting daily sales and everything. Yeah. Um, but she had to like, so her brain was not in that mindset. Like 
give you an example. Her first titling exercise that we gave her, she put mm -hmm. cat four times in the title. So that's how <laughs> bad it was. Yeah. You know, I had to explain to her that you don't repeat text in the mm -hmm. title because you're wasting the space. You need to do another word that's like cat, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. um, that people would search for. So, but you know, to, to say to you guys that are, you know, that are stuck with the titling and the bullet points, first of all, it's not hard. You need to just uh, erase that from your mind, because if yeah. you, if you say that, then it is going to be difficult and you are going to be stressful um, mm -hmm. when doing it. But like Michael said, like, just honestly think of what words are related to that and use those. Obviously you want to do research and make sure that those are the right words, but it's, it's really like people put too much emphasis on it being a big deal, I find. Yeah, 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 absolutely. People overthink the keywords or they think that if I put a, a, a specific keyword, I'm going to get a ton yeah. of sales. It's just like, even if you put the, the, you know, the perfect title, if there is such a thing, you know, it, there's so much more, there's so much more going on in play that actually affects how many sales you make. And, and obviously we are talking organic. So I understand that people, you know, it is important, but the other half, the other half of it is so much more important. The actual ideas and the generation of ideas and, and, uh, you know, riding trends or, or having different strategies, you know, there's all kinds of different things, but the keywords come right at the end and they are kind of, you know, they're important, but then so much less significant than the other stuff, I would say. I would say to people um, that probably one of the more important things to me is um, being consistent yeah. and uh, sticking through with mm -hmm. it and having like a, a schedule of coming up with ideas, creating the designs, uploading them, like yeah. being consistent, I think is what most people need to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's so true. And I think there's a, a chapter in my book about when I, the moment I stopped, uh, I started um, doing a, a design a day, I kind of challenged myself. Okay, you know, I've been doing a design kind of maybe once a week or two a week or something like that. Um, and then I kind of said, okay, well, you know, the more designs I have, the more money I make. So let me challenge myself and do a design a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I did that kind of it coincided with with merch taking off and stuff. But it really just, you know, rocketed my my sales up. So yeah, absolutely. If you can be consistent, and do something like a design every day or more than that, then, uh, yeah, that consistency just kind of builds up because of, of course what we're doing is building up an inventory of designs mm -hmm. and the more designs you have, the more money you will make. And, uh, if you just keep feeding the beast, then, then you'll see that income rise. Now it won't be immediate, but over time it will kind of, you know, keep going up. So yeah, definitely consistency is, is really important. Volume of, of designs is really important. Um, and keywords is not as important as either of those things. And I think um, also, you know, being consistent, but being consistent, even though you're not making sales, especially in the beginning, because that's oh. where a lot of people fall off. Um, when we first started, um, so I first started it by myself and um, I made a, a t-shirt design, like it was a quote type thing. And then mm -hmm. only my friends and family bought it. And then for a couple of months, it was just dead. No sales, no sales. Um, but I kept seeing success with other people in, in the Facebook groups. Yep. And I was like, hey, you know, there's something to this. I've got to crack this. But I also realized where my strengths and where my weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. So I don't like doing the text. It's like my least favorite thing. I, yeah. I'm more of coming up with the ideas, um, doing simple designs and uploading the shirts I, I love doing. Mm -hmm. So I went to my business partner and another friend and we found out what our strengths were. And uh, so Arid is really good at doing the more complicated designs as well as working with our Upwork designers. And Maria, like I mentioned, she only does the, the text and very, very simple designs. And you know, you need to realize what your strengths are and what you're willing to work at. And if you can't do that part, then find someone who does. Because yeah. it's like, if I, if I were, like, I'm going to be honest, if I was doing this by myself, I don't think I'd be as successful without the two of them because yeah. of the way I work, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, and also in the very beginning, 
um, we would we would meet once a week and for two months straight we had no sales but we would still continue to meet once a week come up with ideas come up with shirts and still put them in the save drafts even yeah. though we weren't making sales and okay. and I think if we didn't do that and we just gave up after month one we wouldn't be you know where we are right now right now like we're so ecstatic and happy like our best day happened like uh, this week we had yeah. like 24 sales in one day on merch by amazon yeah that's and awesome that's a huge thing i remember like the first 25 taking forever yeah. and now <laughs> it's like in one day and we can't wait till q4 christmas time because it's gonna be yeah, like yeah. crazy that's it but i mean just... i remember like my first red bubble sale it was like you know three dollars or something yeah. it, it's that validation and once you get once you know the concept works, you know, it gives you so much more confidence to keep going. And I remember, you know, like two years ago, sat in our old house, um, just with my laptop on the sofa, just uploading. Uh, I was doing them to Etsy. So I was selling on Etsy and, and the process just took forever. Like every design was just like pulling teeth. It was so, un you know, I was just like, I'd rather do anything else than this, but I just stuck at it and I would go there night after night and just upload design after design to Etsy. And I was like, you know, I maybe made a sale a week or something. It was like next to nothing. Um, but that Christmas time, you know, it made a couple of thousand or something like that just from Etsy. So it paid off, but I, you know, exactly what you're saying, you know, if you, you just got to stick at it and those that do, you know, will reap the rewards from it. But yeah, if you, if you give in after like not seeing any action for a couple of, you know, couple of weeks then you know you're probably not cut out for it or you need to change your mindset first and get a bit more kind of dedicated first mm -hmm. because it is doable it's totally doable and out of all the things that i've done online and me and my business partner have done a lot of things mlms yeah. like website design uh online courses like this is by far the most simple in terms of mechanics uh to make money in my opinion yeah yeah absolutely so let's take some questions. Got mm -hmm. some questions here. Hold on one second. I'm just going to pull it up here on my phone. Okay. So let's see here. So Michael, what is the difference between the, the two books that you currently offer? Okay. Yeah. Um, so my first book is called how to sell more shirts and it is a collection of emails that I sent over the course of the past year. Um, so if you're on my newsletter from day one, basically, you're the only person who will have seen every email. <laughs> so uh, they, these were emails, they weren't, you know, they didn't go out publicly or anything like that. They just went out to my uh, secret newsletter list. And uh, basically, it's it's kind of tracking my, my thoughts and uh, ideas and things. Um, so there's a lot of kind of quite in-depth advice in there of kind of how to sell more shirts, basically, which was the process I was going through at the time. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a bit more advanced, I'd say, that book. Um, it's not really a beginner's guide. Um, but my other book, um, Grow Your Own T-Shirt Business, is basically a collection and re-editing and working in my blog post, which are a lot more kind of uh, beginner friendly, I would say. So it's I give in in that in the second book, uh, Grow Your Own T-Shirt Business. There's a lot more kind of uh, principles and kind of concepts that you need to kind of get your head around. So the kind of thing we've just been talking about, we've been talking about consistency and uh, daily designing and that kind of thing. So I go into kind of all those kind of concepts, the things that I think people need to know before they get started, kind of the foundational stuff. And then uh, kind of how to sell more shirts is a lot more kind of, you know, use this website, go here, or here's a spreadsheet layout that I use and that kind of thing. It's a lot more kind of uh, nuts and bolts, I would say, in the second book, although awesome. that's technically my first book. But uh, yeah, so there, there is a difference between the two. But um, yeah, right now you can get both of them for for a discounted price. So um, yeah, check them out if you're interested in looking for, for ways to kind of get new tactics or ideas, uh, or if you're kind of just looking for an introduction to print on demand and stuff. Yeah, so the uh, Michael's books, uh, the link will be down in the description below, and it's twenty nine ninety nine, which I think is a complete steal for two full ebooks. Like these ebooks, like there's a ton of information in them. Yeah. I haven't been able to go through everything because it's yeah. it's a lot. It um, a but lot, yeah. yeah, but it's twenty nine ninety nine, and you said the price will be going up, correct? 
It will be going up soon, yeah. After a couple of weeks, I'm just, I've just launched the second book, so I wanted to do a special offer for everything, and the first book got revised and updated. So, yeah, special offer for, for people for the first kind of couple of weeks and stuff. But that, that, that will be going up, um, and it's already kind of it's already higher than that on my website, so people are already paying full price. But this special offer is live for, for, for the next kind of few days, a couple of weeks maybe, something like that. Awesome. Awesome. Appreciate that offer. I uh, got another question here. Uh, uh, where and how can I get his free lead generator? Not sure what uh, they're uh, referring to. I'm not sure what they mean there unless they mean my books. In or maybe your landing pages or landing pages. Um, no, I'm not know. too sure. Maybe um, if you can clarify what that means yeah. in the questions, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Um, all right. So we answered this, but they were saying, do you, do you have to be artistic to sell merch? And the answer is no, you don't. It's a definitely a benefit if you are, yeah. but, mm -hmm. um, you don't need to be cause I'm not a, a graphic artist or anything like that. Um, you just need yeah. to have an eye for what, uh, what looks good on a shirt and sort mm -hmm. of like in the area, like, let's say if you're doing a shirt about, golfing or or uh, bowling or something that you can uh relate to those people who like bowling and put the proper image and text like basically sell to them right yeah yeah or even an even simpler example would just be like a text only thing like you might know a particular phrase or something that other people don't know and there's no t-shirt for that already in existence or something i mean if you if you for example could kind of predict the future or see a trend coming down the line um you know if you if you knew about kind of fake news or something like that obviously fake news is this huge thing if you knew that you know trump was going to talk about fake news and, and this would be a huge thing for weeks and months um and you kind of just created a t-shirt that just said fake news or or cnn is fake news or whatever it was you know, you would mm -hmm. obviously be kind of ahead of the curve and you would then be able to, to make sales from that. So, um, you know, you don't need to be artistic to do that. You do need to be kind of aware of what's happening and what's coming up and what trends are, are bubbling or, uh, you know, those kind of things. Um, and also just on that topic, um, we think of trends and obviously I, the automatic thing is to go for like big trends like, you know, Trump or, or politics or, you know, mm -hmm. things that are on headline news. But I think a lot of us forget that there's trends happening in every you know, every little niche and community that you that you might be a part of or even not. They have their own trends and they have their own kind of, you know, things that are popular and phrases that are popular for a while. So in the gaming community or in the football community or in, you know, any anything you like in the Bitcoin community or in the libertarian community, you know, there's these little niche communities that exist. Um, Reddit is one of my favorite websites to kind of have a look around at different communities. And all those communities have their own little trends, you know, things that come up and are popular for a while and then they die back down and stuff. So, um, and these niches and communities, the reason I say this is that they are a lot less competitive to play in than headline news trends and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's going to be hard to make a President Trump t-shirt that sells, but it's going to be a lot less hard to make a kind of you know whatever the trend is right now in online gaming or whatever i don't know that's not my niche but you know those kind of things there's going to be some popular game or there's going to be some popular kind of topic that's being talked about in certain communities that you might know about that other people don't know about so it's going to be a lot easier to get in on that and make some money from that than it would be the big kind of headline trends. So yeah, you don't need to be artistic, but you do need to have some, I call it an advantage, you know, some kind of skill or something, something you know about that other people don't, um, that will put you ahead of the pack. But yes, you don't need to be artistic. You don't need to be creative, but it does give you a massive advantage if you are. But don't let that put you off. Don't let no. that put you yeah. off. You can definitely, you can, that this can be learned. All this stuff can be learned. And, um, you know, the success, the amount of success that there are with people with merch who have zero experience is incredible. So don't, yeah, let, yeah it, everything can be learned and you can definitely do this. Um, also another thing when you were mentioning, um, going after the, uh, the politics stuff and like the stuff that everyone else does. Yeah. That's what we were doing in the beginning it was like, oh, they were talking about, this is about Trump and Hillary yeah. and let's do this. 
And that did not work for us because there's so much competition. Everyone is grabbing after that, yeah. that, you know, after a certain number of politics type shirts, first of all, a lot of them got rejected. Um, yeah. But even after that, we were like, okay, hey, we don't want to go after what everyone else is doing now. We're going to go the opposite direction and go after what other people aren't eating at. So that's, yeah. that is our strategy is to go after these like little niche things. Like you said, like gaming and like we would go in there and find like what video games are popular. What are the sayings? And, you know, yep. like, cause there's, everyone's got like their little cliques and, and niches that they yeah. on, on little. The and, you know, yeah like the the words yeah. and stuff the little inside jokes so yeah, exactly. that is that is definitely a good recommendation do not go after what everyone else is doing because you're even if you do the same keywords and like similar design or even better design it's hard to get in there yeah yeah and i think it's like uh, people might hear that and think okay don't go after trends now I'd, I'd, i wouldn't say don't go after trends but i would say don't go after trends that have already hit if that makes sense mm -hmm. like yeah. i spent a lot of last year trying to predict and judge trends and, and anticipate what was coming and uh, obviously that's kind of hit and miss and it's kind of it's very much you know nine times out of ten you lose but at the same time it's um it can be done you know and there's examples i give in my book of like you know, looking at what kind of holidays are coming up and kind of mixing that with what's popular in the news. And, you know, it's not like rocket science, but it does take a bit of an approach to get it right. And it's not something you get right all the time. But if you're kind of just one person and you can afford to kind of dedicate time to that, then then I think that's a, that's a, a valid way to kind of make this work, especially if you can't do the volume thing. Because there's kind of like, you know, there's obviously multiple strategies here, but one strategy to make a living from this would just be volume. Just create as many designs as you can, um, which is great, but not everyone can do that. So if you if you can't do that, then one of the things might be to kind of predict trends, uh, to go very, you know, just make make spend your time researching the low competition areas and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Just uh, don't be put off trends, but if you're going to turn up late to a party, then <laughs> why, why turn up? You know, you've, the, the boat's already sailed. So yeah. don't say something that everybody is already going after. I agree. All right. Another one here. Um, I understand organic traffic on merch is good, but if you have a lower tier and need to use a print on demand company um, to get listings up, and you need to use paid advertising which platform is best so basically if you're stuck at a low tier on merch uh -huh. what what other um platform other than merch by amazon would be best so uh if you're just doing organic then um i, I would recommend redbubble is the best kind of second best to merch i mean it's nowhere near as as lucrative but it is uh especially in my experience that you can get good organic sales through Redbubble. Uh, tpublic.com is another one that does decent for me, not far off what Redbubble does in terms of income. Um, mm -hmm. Etsy is a great platform if you can use Etsy with a print-on-demand fulfillment company. Um, if, you just, if you just Google um, Michael Essick print-on-demand, then you'll find uh, a blog post I wrote uh, comparing some print-on-demand fulfillment companies. And any of those, are, you know, they're all basically using the same technology to print and ship T-shirts. Um, so you can use any of those companies and use a, a website like Etsy or eBay, or you could sell on Seller Central on Amazon and, um, and do that kind of thing. Uh, but for the easiest, you know, the thing that is most similar to merch is going to be Redbubble and TeePublic and sites like that. There's a few others designed by humans, uh, Society6 um teespring you know does a kind of organic thing right now uh you can make a little bit there um so yeah there's there's other sites out there but if you're if you're just going purely organic it's hard um unless you have volume of designs i would say uh, to make make a kind of consistent decent amount of income um but obviously if you can do advertising and i'm not really the guy to to ask about that because I don't do a lot of advertising myself, mm -hmm. um, then I guess I would look first at Amazon's new AMS marketing and all that kind of stuff, but I've not done that myself, so I can't really uh, 
talk about it. I've done a little bit of Facebook advertising and I know that that obviously that's lucrative if you can uh, crack it, but I haven't, <laughs> I've not had much success with Facebook ads yet. So uh, most of my income is still organic and uh, I make a little bit from advertising on um, Instagram is kind of where I've been making some money um, doing sponsored posts. So not, not, ads directly through um through uh instagram but through you know contacting people and saying hey oh. would you be interested in posting uh this photo and i'll send you some shirts or we'll work out a deal you know and pay them for their for their uh, posts and that kind of thing so that's been working well for me but that you know you have to have a niche you have to have a you know a related topic and that kind of thing so i, I wrote i wrote an article on that so that's on i think it's on my website if it's not on my website it's, it's in one of the books awesome um, so yeah, there's certainly stuff you can do do with advertising, but I'm not kind of the expert on that. So I wouldn't want to talk too much in detail about that. Yeah, same. I'm not really into too much of the paid advertising. I'm more interested in the organic um, yeah. just because then with organic, you don't really like it just happens organically, right? So you don't have to uh, pay, exactly, pay yeah. for ad advertising. But we did try one thing with uh, Famebit. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that site before. Yeah. I've heard of it. I've not, I don't use it myself, but I have heard of it. We tried it out last Christmas. So we basically paid a YouTuber who had about 250,000 subscribers mm -hmm. and he, he, um, is a movie review channel. So the t-shirt that we had was had to do with a Christmas movie. Okay. And, um, so we paid him to wear the shirt and then to mention the where to buy the shirt in the first like minute or so of the video and yeah. that did that did really well so we spent about i think like 250 250 or 275 us and then it uh -huh. gave us uh, over a thousand in um merch bams on commission profits that's great yeah yeah i think uh, the yeah, thing but, i um, found with with um with sponsored and instagram and stuff is you really have to throw some money at it. You have to have some money in your pockets first before you can mm -hmm. see an impact. Cause I've been doing Facebook for a while and never really seen it work, but I was only spending very small amounts of money. Um, so it's hard to make a return when you're only spending like $5 a day or something. Um, yeah. But when I then kind of went, Oh, okay. And kind of switched my mindset and, and reached out to someone and he asked for like a thousand dollars and I was like, okay, you know, let's see if it works. Um, and it, and it did and kind of, you know, we made a lot from that. So I, I think it's it's something that if you're just starting out, I wouldn't really fool with it until you've got some money mm -hmm. in the bank um, because it's going to cost some money to do it effectively. Um, and if, you, if you're kind of getting to that point, then I would say, you know, be prepared to put some, some real cash into it um, because only once you spend over a certain amount are you going to see that come back to you. And if you spend, you know, if you don't spend enough, you you really don't you're not going to see an equivalent return, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. We didn't start doing that advertising thing until we had like that money in profits. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't even think about advertising in the beginning. Um, we get questions from people who are just starting out like, oh, should I be creating a website? And I personally don't think that in the very beginning that you should be starting stuff like that out. I think you should learn the the merch by Amazon game, upload to other platforms yeah. and just like m m get yourself like going on that first, get yourself like daily sales and then yeah. maybe think about that. But right now we're not even, we're at the 500 tier for both of our accounts. Um, uh -huh. And we're, we're at about, I'd say 10 to 15 sales per day. And we're not even thinking about paid advertising or creating a website or anything. We just want to grow. Um, yeah yeah merch right now that, that's just... what i was that was my mindset was just everything goes into one account so i you know i didn't take any money out i didn't spend any on advertising i was just let's just grow the organic and um and once you grow it to a certain level and when you're kind of happy with that level then you can start you know okay let's take some of that and experiment and spend it on advertising and see what else we can do but yes yeah, certainly don't like you know i wouldn't recommend anyone run out and spend money on advertising if it's their first, you know, business or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I would certainly want to want to validate my ideas through this completely free marketplace <laughs> and system that we have with merch and buy or Etsy or, or Redbubble. You know, if you can't sell a T-shirt on Redbubble after a few months, 
something's wrong somewhere, you know, and, and that kind of needs fixing first because you can throw money at something and it's just going to, you're just going to be wasting your money. So certainly use all these tools to validate and then spend once you've got everything working. Mm -hmm. Agree. All right. So we got another one here. I'm at the 25 tier with 12 sales. What should I be doing now to make it to the next tier? How would you answer that? Um, first thing I would do is look at the sales you have had and kind of analyze them and review them and say, okay, wh why did these ones sell? Um, now you'll probably find that I imagine of, uh, I'm imagining they've got 25, um, they're on the 25 slots. So they've got 25 designs up. They've filled out their slots in other words. And, uh, you'll probably find that of those 12 sales that you've had in, most of them are going to come from one or two designs, maybe even, you know, maybe three or four, but you probably see that one design sold a lot. And then, you know, another design sold a few, and then the majority of your designs didn't sell at all. Um, so I would, I would initially kind of analyze that and say, okay, why did this design sell? And, uh, you know, search it on Amazon, look, what's the competition like? Uh, you know, what happened? Why did it sell then? Why is it not selling now? Assuming the sales have slowed down. Um, and what can I do a similar design or some, is there a similar niche that I can exploit? Because if you sold something, obviously it means that, you know, you did it once. So the, the game becomes, how can I repeat it? And why is it not repeating? If it happened once, why, why can't I do it again? Obviously you can. Um, so it's just that kind of initial um, exploration into how can I get that sale again? You know, why can't I get that sale again? And uh, who bought it? Why did they buy it? Ask yourself all these kind of questions. Um, and then you can make decisions about removing some of the designs that aren't selling. Um, I would never do 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 anything too hasty. I, you know, I, I don't know how long a period of time we're talking here. Uh, but I've had people ask me, you know, oh, I've had designs up for a week and they've not sold. I'm like, a oh week my is, gosh. is nothing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, gosh. it's going to take at least uh, like a month maybe to, to let designs bed in. Uh, and if you've not had any sales after a month, then I would, I would then start thinking, okay, maybe something's wrong. Um, but not before then at all. Um, so yeah, that would be my first thing. Um, obviously max out your slots if you haven't already. Um, and maybe just try some different tactics. So you might do like a third of your designs, might be like trending things. And then you might do a third that are really super niche. And then you might do a third that, are, um, I don't know, some, some other kind of niche or, or example. So instead of having all your eggs in one basket, kind of spread, spread them out and, uh, you know, try different things, but don't be too hasty with swapping designs out, you know, let things kind of sit for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and use other websites like Redbubble and T public in the meantime to number one, bring you some extra cash. And number two, test out, you know, which designs might sell, because obviously you are limited to 25 designs on Amazon, but you're not limited to 25 on Redbubble. So go and go and smash a load more designs on Redbubble. And maybe you'll find, OK, this design on Redbubble that I don't have on Amazon is doing great. So obviously you swap out and put that one on, on Merch or something. So, yeah, just use use all the tools at your disposal um, until you get, uh, you know, tiered up with with uh, Amazon. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just that kind of game of finding, finding what works for you and then just keep, keep on going. Cool. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say that, um, sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> I'm losing okay. my, um, when someone was saying, oh, they, they, after a week, you know, oh, it didn't sell yeah, like yeah. that's. You're in the wrong mindset, first of all. If yeah. you're thinking like that after one week, one week, um, we were at two months, um, no sales, and I would log into the account every day and see zero, yeah. zero, zero. And then one day I saw like one, which represented one sale, and yeah. it just is like you just need to hang in there, and it's it's totally doable. It's yeah. it's yeah. not it's not rocket science, and. Um, yeah, it's, it's doable. And, and at the same time, it is. It, it obviously it's getting more competitive. So I don't want to, you know, tell people, oh, it's great. You know, you just mm -hmm. whack designs up and you you make sales. Oh, it's easy. It's not easy, and it's not going to get any easier. It's going to get harder. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you can if you can dedicate yourself to it, there, there's very few people who, um, 
are going to be kind of in the trenches every day. I think a lot of people are going to look at merch. They're going to play around with it for a few weeks. They won't get any sales and they'll drop it and they'll walk away. So if you're someone who will stick at it, then, you know, you're in the minority. And if you're someone who'll stick at it, who has got skills and has got ability, especially in design or in ideas and trend spotting and that kind of thing, then again, you, you've given yourself another advantage. You're, you're another step ahead. And um, even with like the big, big merch sellers, kind of like, especially with kind of my experience, last year I was chasing trends. Last year I was, I was looking at what's popular every day. This year I'm not. This year I'm just looking at volume. So I'm not looking for like little trends and all that kind of thing. I'm just kind of coming up with my own ideas. Mm -hmm. and I'm kind of relying on volume to keep my account growing. So I've kind of left chasing trends which means there's one less person you know chasing the trend now maybe i've been replaced by you know 500 other people but um my point is that you know people are kind of moving up the tiers all the time so you know you just need to focus on the next level for you you know you don't need to worry about getting to the thousand tier you just need to get from 25 to 100 or, or whatever it is now and then yeah. from 100 to 500 and, and so on so um yeah, don't kind of get ahead of yourself. Just kind of focus on how can I get these sales right now and then and keep it going. Yeah, I agree. Like um, a lot of people, they're at the 10 tier or the 25 tier and then they're like, how do I get to a thousand tier, you know? But really you just need to get the basics down first and do it step by step. Um, yeah. All right, got another question here. So knowing what uh, you know now, going back, what would you do differently? Great question. Um, I would, what would I do differently? Well, kind of when I started, obviously we didn't have merch. So, um, so I didn't know merch was coming, <laughs> you know, for the first couple of years that I was doing print on demand and just doing Redbubble and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think it's kind of, it depends who you are. If you're an artist or, or a creative, uh, you know, a designer type, then um, I would really recommend that you develop either your own personal brand or a specific kind of business brand um, that you do everything under. Well, not everything, but that you can, at least you have something on the side that's kind of like your own brand. Um, so that from day one, um, you, you know, you could be creating trends and stuff on one side, but then on the other side, maybe you have a your own brand that's focused on doing, um, I don't know, let's say it's dolphin related artwork and you just do kind of dolphins and oceans and and this kind of stuff and you call it the dolphin company or you know <laughs> dolphin t-shirts or whatever it is but you you know you have your own brand and you just kind of stick with that and it's kind of niche based and it's uh you know similar style everything kind of you know sticks together so people something that people could like you know something that people would follow as an instagram account or something like that um so from day one, I would, I would, I would, you know, you don't need to do that from day one, but I would at least be thinking in that direction. Um, the reason I say that is that it takes a long time to grow um, a brand. Um, you can't do something like that overnight. Whereas with print on demand and, and merch and Redbubble, you can make money literally overnight. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you have the right ideas. Um, but the problem with with merch and print on demand and Redbubble is obviously we are subject to another company's um you know whims so if amazon changes its algorithm or they want to start offering less royalties per shirt then they can do that and hit you in the pockets you know whenever they like whereas if you have your own brand and you're selling through your own shopify store eventually or even through something like teespring but you have your own audience you have people who follow you you have people who like you for what you create then you have a security there that you you will never have through merch um, so I think that's great. And I think I would have, um, if I could go back, I would, I would stick with that from the start. I did do that and I kind of, kind of jumped from a few different brands, but I didn't stick with one. And I think I would, looking back, I think it would have been better if I would have just stuck with one brand that I was building up alongside doing everything else, if that makes sense. Um, awesome. so, but obviously that only applies really if you're kind of a creative designer type and you're going to that's kind of where you want to go with things. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not, and you just want to create as many designs as possible and make as much money as possible through platforms like merch, then my advice would be just volume, just create as much as you can. Um, 
and I wouldn't even worry about like quality and stuff so much. I would just be like volume, volume, volume. Um, obviously you're going to have an eye for the quality and you're going to pay attention to that, but I wouldn't, um, obsess over the quality. I would obsess about making as many designs as I can and how I can make more designs because, um, because if you're, if that's the way you want to go, then volume is really the key. And, uh, that's what I would advise people to focus on. And when I started, I was very much kind of like, oh yeah, I've had an idea. I'll let it sit in my head for a few weeks <laughs> and then I'll kind of sketch it out and then I'll take my time. And I was, you know, I was, there was no, um, drive really. I was just kind of, oh, if it sells, it sells, whatever. Mm -hmm. And there was no commitment. There was no kind of goal setting or anything like that. So I think if I would have had a different mindset from the start, I would be way ahead of where I am now. Um, if I would have just been like, okay, what's today's design? Okay. You know, there were so many designs that I didn't create that I just kind of let go and, you know, oh yeah, well maybe it won't sell or, you know, convince myself out of it, you know? Um, so I think if, if you would just have a mindset of just create, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, um, then you'll be in a much better place two or three years down the line. Um, but you probably need to think two or three years down the line and not expect to see things happen in within weeks and months, um, but to have a long-term view. And I think, thankfully, I did have that from the early days. So I was never like, oh, it didn't sell today. So, you know, forget it. I'm not doing this anymore. I was always kind of thinking, well, this is a long-term play. So I'm going to be doing this for a couple of years before it ever makes enough money for me to quit my job anyway. So, um, so at least I had that. So, yeah, I know that was a lot of different <laughs> answers there, but I hope that helped. No, I think it really does. And um, when we started this, we said, we're going to go all in full effort for one year and we're going to mm -hmm. see what happens after that. And yeah. I think at the eight month or seven or eight months mark, we hit a thousand a month in after yeah. all the, after Amazon takes everything. Um, yeah. And then we're like, okay, yeah, this is real. We're going to go in it. Like now we're meeting like two, three times a week for a longer period of time and merch my Amazon on, on our list of things. Cause we have, um, some other things that we do with our business along with this YouTube channel. It was at the bottom mm -hmm. and it's slowly over the year has moved up and it's like number one and two right now in terms of our focus, because it has just grown. And it, and I know it was because of the consistency and the yeah. volume thinking volume you know our designs were not always like i mean if you were to show them to a graphic designer they'd probably sure. be like oh this isn't good but that's not how we were we were thinking was to get it like perfect you know yeah. we we knew that the the design was good but not like crazy artistically good but we were more interested in the volume and we've always thought about that and being like that is to uh, one is greater than zero. So if you don't have that design up, you're not going to expect to sell anything. It's your your best chance is to just have as many designs up. That yeah. way your chances are greater. Like you're increasing your chances. Yeah, exactly. And I think if, if you're an artist, you kind of, or at least with me, I was kind of like, oh, you know, it's about the design. It's about the, um, the quality and it's, you know, you can't do that at volume and you can't, but on the on the flip side, like if you want to make money, you're going to have to create at volume um, because that's the way this model works. Um, like in the early days, I was thinking I was trying to get designs on sites like T-Fury um, and the quality of design there is very, very high. And it's a competition based system. So you don't you know, they don't put any design up. You have to be selected by the, you know, by the, the fans, uh, guard, you know. Well, not the fans. It's like the they actually oh, have the... like art directors. Oh, so okay. they they review everything and they pick the designs that they like and that they want to sell. And so the quality of the design has to be great, and the idea has to be great as well. Um, so that's where I was focused on in the early days. Was just like, okay, I need to do the best design. I need to come up with the best idea. Um, and so I would obsess over designs and over the details, when really I would have probably been a lot better off now if I would have just gone for volume and created every design I could think of and not obsessed about the quality, mm -hmm. but just got every design out there. Because the other thing about this is, um, you know, people might think, Oh, I've done a design and then add it to my list of designs. And then that, you know, it's in my inventory of designs. It's on merch. Okay. Next design. And then they kind of think, okay, you know, you're never going to 
revisit or think about that design once it's up. You know, it's just up there. But actually, you know, if you're smart, you're going to review kind of what's selling and you're going to look back over your designs that you've created and you're going to think, huh, that's given me an idea for another design. Or, oh, I could tweak that or redesign it or I could use it for this other market or something like that. And you could find, you know, you're getting multiple uses out of one design and uh, reappropriating it for different purposes and stuff. And I've even had stuff like that that, that did well on like T-Fury like years later, like... I created a design for one purpose or for one joke. And then like years later thought, oh, I could kind of just twist that and change this word or something like that. And then send it to T-Fury and they're like, oh yeah, we like it. We're going to print it. So um, yeah, there's kind of different uses for, you know, multiple uses out there for, for different designs. So don't limit yourself to thinking, you know, it's just a volume game and move on to the next one. You know, think it's a volume game. So let's, let's create multiple versions of every design we create or something like that. You might want to do that. So mm -hmm. yeah, th think on how you can get the most out of everything basically. Cool. Okay. Well, we have time for a couple more questions. We need yeah. to wrap it up here. Don't want to waste any more of your time. Um, so they, the data lead generator that they were referring to um, was the Excel spreadsheet that helps automate your listings, brand name, title, and bullet points. That's what they were referring to. That oh, first right, initial okay. question, um, they're um, asking how to get that. I d well, interesting question because I'm not sure I've actually said anything about that before, but I do have, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have a Google uh, Sheets kind of system that I use to, to, well, I wouldn't say it optimizes anything, but it kind of just automates and creates the, the titles and the descriptions and stuff based on what I put in there. Um, so it's not doing anything complicated or smart. It's just kind of, you know, I say, Trump t-shirt and it, or I say Donald Trump and it puts t-shirt at the end of it and that kind of thing. Um, okay. So uh, unfortunately I don't, I don't, I don't kind of give that out or anything yet, but I'm kind of, I'm thinking about uh, maybe trying to turn this into a piece of software that would make it easier for people. Um, so yeah, I, I watch the space, I guess on that one, but I, I, there okay. is, um, there's a spreadsheet I linked to in my book, um, which is uh, how I kind of organize my listings. Um, but it and and it just organizes all the data. Um, so it's not automated or anything, but it's just kind of how I save the titles, save the descriptions, and all that stuff. Um, so okay, nothing, and that is uh, that's special. in the book. Yeah, there's a link to that from the book. Um, okay. That take that gives you uh, you know a, a link to a Google spreadsheet that will allow you to make a copy and save it for yourself and use it. Um, but as far as the listing kind of automation stuff, I don't have something I can give out on that yet. Um, but watch this space. I might um, I might create a kind of product that people can can purchase or something. Um, cool. So yeah. All right. And uh, what percentage do you set for Redbubble? Uh, I think it's. Uh, if you bear with me, I will double check. But I think it's twenty five or thirty. Um, I can't remember what the default is, but I think it's like um, fifteen or twenty. I can't remember. Okay. Let me just something check. like I'm that. Just logging in now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, I did have it at whatever the default was. Okay. It's 25%. Okay. Is what mine is now. So, uh, I think it was at 15 or 20. Um, and I think it was last year. I remember putting the, putting the percentage up and, and thinking and keeping an eye on it and looking for sales and, and, uh, had no, no discernible difference on my sales. So I would recommend, especially if you're already making sales with Redbubble, to put your margin up because uh, your customers probably won't think twice um, and you'll probably see your sales will kind of continue and you'll obviously therefore be making a bit more money. Okay, cool. Last, last question here. Yep. Um, do we put a few keywords in the product features section as well as the title as long as you're not repeating them? So a few keywords um, in the product description. So like, um, I guess they're asking the, the title and the, I'm guessing the bullet points cause that's the, the product features. Um, yeah. do you put the same kinds of keywords in the bullet points and the title? I um, is the yes. Yeah, I usually do. So, um, I would repeat, especially the most important keyword or key phrase. Uh, I would repeat that in the, 
I would have it in the title and then I would have it in the bullet points, uh, either one bullet point or both bullet points. And I'd put it in the description as well, just for good measure. Um, I would, I'm not like obsessive about repeating everything from the title in, in the, in the descriptions or anything. Um, but especially the most important phrases I would want to get in a couple of times. Um, I know if kind of you, uh, Amazon search function is, uh, built so that if you do search for a word, then if that word is in the title or the bullets, then it should show up in the results. But obviously, um, when you're competing with other listings and other sellers, uh, I think it just helps to repeat it as many times as you can. Um, so I'm not saying repeat it. If you've got it in the title once, obviously you don't need to then, like your example of cat, 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 you don't need to do that. Yeah. Uh, you've got cat once, you just have it once. And then I would just have cat again once in a, in a natural reading sentence in the second, in the first bullet point, And then maybe again in the second bullet point, as long as it made sense to do so. Uh, you know, don't do keyword stuffing or anything like that. Uh, just, just make it natural and, and, uh, you know, and make it, you know, uh, sensible so that a customer who was reading it would be like, okay, it makes sense. Um, and yeah, just repeat it as, as, as long as it seems sensible and reasonable to do so. All right. Okay. So that was the end of the questions. I want to thank you, Michael, for coming on here and sharing your wisdom. We really appreciate it. And I just want to end it off with what's one golden nugget that you'd like to give to the viewers and share with the viewers. Uh, one thing to leave it off and one then we'll end thing. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I would say, uh, Oh, one thing. Well, okay, <laughs> let me talk to like the designers then. Cause that's kind of my, you know, those are my sure. people, yeah. my people. Okay. Uh, if you're a designer, if you're an artist, I would just say, um, work on your thing, whatever it is that is yours and that you, you do best at and kind of that you think, okay, this is really my kind of passion area. I would say work on that alongside um, something that makes you money. So, you know, for a lot of people, that's, uh, you know, we work a job, a normal kind of nine to five. It might be an office job or it might be whatever, restaurant or whatever. And then you kind of do your art when you get home and that kind of thing. So what I would say is just make sure you're working on that thing and treating it like as a business from, from now. Like think two and three years down the line, if this thing worked, you know, what would it look like? What would it be? So for me, I was thinking of a t-shirt business. I was thinking of a t-shirt brand and I was thinking if this works, what does it look like? You know, what does the logo look like? What does the website look like? What kind of products will I be selling? Where will I be selling them? Who will I be selling them to? Um, all these kind of questions. So I would think about that now and kind of just start working towards that. Obviously you're not going to be able to do it all overnight, but give yourself like a year or two years to make some progress on that as you make money with something else. Now, for me, the something else was, it used to be a job and now it's like print on demand. Um, but I'm still working on that kind of brand and that business on the site. So I would say, you know, don't, don't give up on that. Don't get distracted away from that. Just keep on feeding it. You know, even if it's just like once a week that you give a couple of hours to it, but don't let it drop because, um, cause that's the thing, you know, the thing that is you, that you control and that you kind of are truly invested in, that's the thing that's going to kind of really do you good over the long term, And that's going to be really secure and safe and a, a strong business if you keep at it. Um, so yeah, consistency on that, that side business, whatever that is for you, um, while you make money on the, on the, you know, merch or whatever it is for you. So yeah, just keep kind of working on that thing because that's the thing that's going to kind of, you know, make you money in the long term, if that makes sense. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Well, and you, um, you guys can, uh, if you didn't catch everything, you can catch the replay. And if you're interested in getting Michael's books, which I think are great, they have a ton of value. They're $29.99 right now and they will be going up. The links will be in the description below. You guys can check that out. And if people need to contact you, how should they do that? Um, yeah, you can um, you can hit me up on Facebook, uh, Michael Essick on Facebook. Um, if you actually if you buy the books, uh, so with the special offer right now, you get you get access to my uh, private Facebook group. 
So it is completely closed off. Um, no one gets in now unless they purchase my books. So if you do want to do that, then that kind of gives you an extra level of kind of way to get my attention. And uh, so it's a private Facebook group. We, we help one another out. There's about um, 600, I think, people, something like that in there right now. So uh, it's great if you're, um, if you're interested, especially in T-shirts and stuff, you can hop in there and ask questions. And I'm in there most days asking, answering questions and kind of, you know, chatting about what's, what's new with me and what I'm looking at and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, that's a great way to get my attention um, in the <laughs> Facebook group. Or you can just you can message me and stuff like that. But I do kind of uh, it takes me a while to get to get back to everyone. Um, yeah. But yeah. Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Or you can just email Michael at michaelessick.com. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. And as usual, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.